Another thing, just last week, the Daily Beast named him one of the top 50 producers of all time. That's a big deal. Um, just as he is a real and deep friend to all of us, and a loving father to Misha. Lawrence is a true friend of this planet. It is my honor to present the UCLA IOES Award for Environmental Excellence to the inimitable Lawrence Bender. and Bobby Kennedy Jr., who have really devoted their lives for decades, their li well, their lives for decades uh, to this issue. They're, I mean, they're true heroes, true, true living legends. And uh, we're extremely fortunate to have you guys here with us and to speak to us and to be part of the, you know, what we're doing here. Thank you, thank you so much. And um, damn, that killer performance, holy shit. I had no idea what we are getting into. Uh, that was phenomenal, Lincoln Park. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for all that you do, and, um, and wow, thank you for the tens of millions of hits we're going to get tomorrow for all that pushing out you've done. Uh, <coughs> but usually when um, one receives an honor like this one, you start by thanking a long list of people. And I'm truly grateful to so many, Tony Prisker, Tony Prisker. Uh, <laughs> but you only have a few minutes of your attention tonight, uh, and I know that... Uh, I know that they know who they are, they know how much I love them and appreciate them. So what I want to do is uh, use this time to make two simple points. First, I want to say that the IOS, IOES is simply tremendous. This institute is just 15 years old, is already accomplishing so, so much. It has trained hundreds of incredible students, the vast majority of whom are now in the field, working in the government, think tanks, nonprofits, and companies where their job is to help protect our environment. These young people, I want to say kids, but these young people are just extraordinary. Um, how many of you made your career in the field you studied in college? Um, I was just giving a commencement speech, not at uh, UCLA, but at uh, the University of Maine, where I got my degree in civil engineering, and I said, take me. Uh, I knew the first day I started as a freshman in the School of Civil Engineering, I was going to have an amazing career in film. They laughed too, it's good. Thank God they laughed. Uh, so the Institute is really breaking the mold here. They aren't just educating students. They're putting them on a track to make a difference in this world. And that brings me to the second point I want to make tonight. And that is for all of us who care about climate change, we need to stop talking and start acting. It's been over seven years since we released An Inconvenient Truth. At the time, we hoped to provoke a global conversation about climate change, and I believe we were largely successful in that task. But conversation alone is not enough. Our, ne our new inconvenient truth is not nearly enough concrete action has been taken. Now, I know there are, are a few well-worn excuses for, for that lack of action, so I want to acknowledge those and tell you why it's time to discard them forever. Myth number one is that we can afford to make these changes gradually. That is false. The scientific community could not be clear. Climate change is not a next century thing. It is not a theoretical thing. It is right here, right now, a fact. It is a fact that all the hottest years on record have taken place in the last decade, this past decade. It's a fact that the average temperature in Los Angeles right here 
is going to be four to five degrees hotter on average by the time my son is my age in around 2050. It's a fact that we're seeing multiple once-in-a-century storms happening within a few years of each other, and the impacts have been devastating, both in tragic loss and life and property. It is a fact that the sea level is rising, is putting New Orleans and our Gulf fisheries in jeopardy today because of the loss of thousands of acres of Louisiana's, Louisiana's coasts and wetlands. These impacts of sea level rise and more extreme weather are going to become more common and more catastrophic unless we make real, real changes. Myth number two is that the climate change deniers are so powerful that we, cannot, that we can simply not win. We cannot win the, polit the political battles required for meaningful change. Again, that is false. Even all those people that Bobby talked about, we can win. The fossil fuel industry are powerful and they're fighting to cause, to confuse the public and to prevent progress. But when people come together, people of conscience, when they come together, we can win. Here in California, we have, we have passed some of the most progressive environmental laws in the world, targeting greenhouse gas emissions through a cap and trade program and a binding commitment to renewable energy. If we can do it here, we can do it across the country and the world, including China and India, and bring the same energy, resources, and passion to fight. And the final myth, and the most depressing, is that the fight's already been lost, that we are now so far down the road toward climate change that we may, that we may as well give up and start figuring out how to live with it. And that thought simply just breaks my heart. You know, each year when I come to this dinner, I bring my son. Um, and I start to smile about that. And I don't know if he really enjoys it. As a matter of fact, he usually cries each time. <coughs> Hanging around with us boring folks. But I bring him here just the same. And I do it not just because I like to show him off, although I really do love to show him off. But I do it because I want him to see that there are grown-ups who are trying hard to make sure the world he'll grow up in is as safe and beautiful and livable as the one we have today. Because I know that he and his generation will hold us all in judgment one day, and we will have to answer. And I don't want to have to tell them that they have to figure out how to live in a changing, hotter world, straining to the limits because of scarce water supplies, the rising sea, and extreme climate. I don't want to tell them that they'll have to build gigantic levees to keep the oceans away from our cities, to build shelters, to protect us from massive storms, to live in fear that water our food, our clean air will become too scarce to support human life as we know it. I want to be able to honestly tell them that at this moment in history, people came together and put the good of the planet ahead of their narrow interests. I want to be able to say that we all stopped just talking and started acting. And that means we changed our personal habits and started living less energy intensive lives. That we started thinking about others, not just ourselves. That we started using social media to change the world not just to share our photos of our last meal. It means changing our professional focus and starting to think about how we can use our positions to help drive change. And it means we changed our political habits and started sending our message to elected leaders. Either you start doing something on climate change, or we give every dollar we donate, every dollar we spend on consumer products, every endorsement we offer, every vote we cast, to someone else who will. That is what it means to start acting. Your support for the IOES is a great step. The young people you are helping to train are going to be the leaders of the coming era of sustainability. But we all simply need to do more. The stakes are so high, the precious gift of a planet is in mortal danger. We can save it and ourselves. And, it all, and all it takes is courage, courage to act. Thank you.